Hey guys, in today's video we'll be going through how you can install Homebridge through Docker on a Raspberry Pi or any Linux machine. The benefit of doing it this way means that by using Docker you can easily spin up multiple containers whenever you like. So for example you could run services like Scripted or Pi-hole all at the same time alongside Homebridge. Homebridge can be installed locally on a Raspberry Pi but I really do recommend installing it through Docker instead as it's much easier to do so. To get started, we need a fresh install of your Linux distro of choice on your machine. As we're using a Raspberry Pi here, I'll be installing the 64-bit version of Raspbian Lite OS. All links and commands for this tutorial can be found in the description below. I'm using the Raspberry Pi Imager tool to flash the image to my micro SD card of my Raspberry Pi 4. So let's choose our OS here. We'll choose Use Custom Image. We'll choose our image. We can now press Ctrl, Shift and X to bring up the advanced options menu. Here we can set a host name for our Raspberry Pi. So I've set mine to pi-server.local. And then we can enable SSH and give it a password as well. This bit's really important as it means we can actually set up our Raspberry Pi and get SSH running without having to use a keyboard, a monitor or a mouse. We can do it all from an external machine. Next, we can scroll down. Um, here, I'm not going to configure Wi-Fi because I'm going to use Ethernet for my device, as that will probably be better, especially if you're running it as a server all the time. And here we can set the local settings. Um, this is mainly useful if you're using Wi-Fi, but it's still good to do. And then we can hit save. Here we can choose our storage device for what we're going to flash this to. So this is a 64 gig micro SD card for myself. So I'll click on that. And now we can click right. We'll click yes here as it's going to format our micro SD card. And then we'll insert, so we'll type in our password. Once that's done, let's insert the micro SD card into our Raspberry Pi and we'll plug in our power as well as our micro HDMI display port and then our ethernet. Once you've booted the Pi up, we can now enter into it using SSH. So do SSH and then Pi, which is the username, and then at the hostname, which is pi-server.local. Click yes. And then we'll type in the password that we set earlier in the config. Great, we're now into our Pi. Now let's make sure our system is running the latest version of the software. So let's run the following command. So we'll type sudo apt-get update, and then two ampersand signs, and sudo apt-get upgrade, and then we'll do a hyphen y. This may take a bit of time to run, so just let it do so in the background. Great, now that that's done, it's now time to install Docker. Fortunately, Docker provides a handy install script just for that. So let's type curl hyphen ssl and the link for the script, which is https colon forward slash forward slash get dot docker dot com. And then we'll do a space and a line and sh. We'll now click enter. The next step is really important. By default, only users who have administrator privileges, so root users, can run containers. If you're not logged in as the root, the one option is to use the sudo prefix. However, what you can also do is add your non-root user to the Docker group, which will allow it to execute Docker commands. So the syntax for adding users to the Docker group is sudo user mod hyphen ag docker and then the username. So what we're going to do is we're going to add permissions for the current Pi user, and we can do this by typing in sudo user mod hyphen a g docker and then dollar sign and then curly brackets and user and then close curly brackets. And we'll now click enter. And we can check which groups the Pi user is now part of by running groups and then dollar sign, and then open curly brackets, user, and then close curly brackets. And here we can see it says our Pi user, and then at the end it says Docker, so it's part of the Docker group. 
Now let's reboot our Pi to let the changes take effect. Let's SSH back into our Pi. And now we're ready to continue. So next we need to install Docker Compose and this requires some dependencies. So let's run the following commands. You can paste this in all in one go and the commands will be in the description. This will install Python and PIP3, which is needed to install Docker Compose. Once that's done, we can begin with the Docker Compose installation. So we'll type in the following command. So it's sudo and PIP3, install, and then docker hyphen compose. And we'll click enter. Finally, let's enable the system service for Docker so that Docker automatically starts whenever you reboot or restart your machine. So we'll type sudo systemctl enable docker and we'll click enter. Now we can begin with installing Homebridge. Let's begin by creating a docker compose manifest. So let's create a new folder and navigate to it. So the first command to create the folder is make directory and we'll do it at home, pi and then Homebridge. And then we can use the cd command to actually navigate to the folder. We can then create our docker and compose file here typing in nano docker hyphen compose dot yml click enter to create it so now we need to paste in the following lines of text which you'll find in the description and this is actually done to pull the docker image with the following environment settings as well i would note that you need to change the time zone settings here so for me as i'm in london i've changed this to europe and then london once this is done, to save and exit this, we'll uh, press Ctrl and X to close the editor. And then when you're prompted about saving the changes, press Y for yes. And then now press Enter to, without changing the file name to save this settings. You'll then return to the terminal window after the updates are saved. So now finally, we can run the docker compose command to install Homebridge. Okay, so we'll type docker hyphen compose up hyphen D and we'll click enter. You'll see it starts to download the files and extract them and install them. Once it's installed, we can verify this by viewing our containers by typing in docker space ps, and this will list the containers that we currently have running. If you don't see your container, try appending an A to show all containers, which means even including the ones that aren't running. So we type docker space ps space hyphen A. We can now access Homebridge at the IP address or hostname of your server using the port 8581. The default login credentials are both admin for password and username. I would recommend chasing, changing this from the default as well as enabling two-factor authentication. I'll soon be making a video on how you can use the built-in authenticator in iOS as opposed to using a Google or Microsoft authenticator. Thank you very much for watching guys. If you've made it this far in the video, drop a comment down below. Please do leave a thumbs up if you found this video useful in any way and consider subscribing too. See you next time. Bye.